on the horizon so that we're giving you a preview of the next uh, meeting of the CAP so that as you plan your calendar that you're aware of what will be discussed at the next meeting. So, um, Brad, can we start with you on the NWCA updates? Yep. I think we have a slide for this. Yeah, it's the next oh, slide. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so just an update on the community investment fund. There's been a lot of progress being made in the last few months on this. And I, I thought it might be helpful to understand a little bit about the source of the fund so far and the um, potential use of the funds in general at a very high level. So people understand what's happened uh, to date. So so far, what has happened is that we have, uh, and the CIF committee has talked about all the work that they've been undertaking. They selected through a process their fiscal sponsor. Uh, we worked through an agreement with that fiscal sponsor and the CIF committee, and that. That first agreement was signed a few weeks ago, and that agreement was specific to the technical assistance grant funds. Um, that the, the the uses, if you remember, the uses for that are are for governance and setting setting things up. They are they are literally technical assistance to community around setting up these processes. Um, because I, I think there's been some confusion about those dollars versus sort of unrestricted community investment fund dollars, which will go to the community investment fund and have no definition other than what the community will decide is the right use of those funds through their own self-governed process. So the technical assistance dollars were four hundred thousand dollars. While this process has been going on, they've been sitting in a in a interest bearing account. I think the amount that was transferred uh, a week or so ago to CNDC was four hundred three thousand dollars or something like that. So those funds have been transferred. We now are working with CNDC to sign a second agreement. I suspect this will go quickly because. It's similar uh, in, in nature, all the components are the same, but the use of the funds are, are don't really have the definition other than for uh, use by the GES communities. <laughs> that amount is, I think we reported originally $70,000 uh, that came from Stock Show. We've added to it from some events. We had our district energy, uh, campus energy provider, uh, through that procurement, also committed some dollars to the community investment fund. So it's it's I think right below ninety thousand dollars right now. And so when we have that agreement signed with CNDC, those funds will also be transferred to the fiscal sponsor. Um, I, I I'm not going to speak for the CIF committee, but. Suffice it to say, they are they they are working through their process to set up their governance, and I know in the coming months you'll you will hear more from them uh, around that effort. I think that's all I need to say about that. So um, can I can I just clarify that the that the four hundred thousand to distinguish from the ninety thousand, the four hundred thousand is really going to its use is technical and it has to be used by the CIF and its processes for setting up the community benefits yes plan yes and then the 90,000 will be part of the use of that part of that plan will be outlined in the work that the CIF committee does yes so um that's sort of money to come uh, one for technical assistance the other uh that will be outlined within the with that within the agreement Yes. Is that correct? I just want to be sure to inform uh, everybody who's attending the meeting. Any questions about the CIF fund and, and how they're going to be used? I can't. I can't see Henry. So if you can, there's him. I do not see any hands raised. Okay. 
right. And also, um, there's a slide on this, as you can see, and it will be these are all posted in the in the minutes of the meeting, so that will go on the website. So, just to be sure. Um, so no questions about that and the community board seat update. Uh, first of all, thank you all for um, all your great work. We'll go back to the agenda. There you go. Thank you all for your great work at our last meeting. Um, as you recall, all five of the applicants attended either in person or online. There was a great conversation uh, between neighbors and uh, folks who were interested in um, who had applied for the open community board seat. Um, those uh, those folks. Um, submitted applications, and the, the, the there were five. And I think that uh, we've been told that the mayor's office selected Caroline Acha uh, from those five uh, applicants. I believe that the I I hope I know as have all five been. Notified. It was that, my understanding from Romaine Pacheco when she reached out to me that everyone had been notified who okay. was if, that they were not selected. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So we want to uh, say thank you to all of you. The, the process uh, that'll start right now is that the mayor's office will submit that appointment to city council and it will go through its process. Council has to um, vote on that uh, nomination. That appointment for the board, and then once that is complete, Caroline can will start attending the authority board meetings uh, uh, as the second community board seat member. And as we talked about earlier, both of those are voting seats now. We're happy about it. Um, Any questions about the community board seat? Congratulations. Yes. Yes, the big deal. And Caroline has joined us this evening as Maybe well. Maybe we could take the um, agenda down and, and yeah. as Brad goes into the real estate projects update, we can see the cold group on the screen. There you go. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think congratulations to, to everyone involved in this process. This has been um, something that's been talked about for a few years. Armando's showing this here, and Armando. <laughs> It's talked to us a number a number of times. Yes, congratulations, Caroline. We're excited to work with you. Um, and uh, I, I, if there are ways that we can improve the process for future, I'd love to hear about it. Um, but we heard lots of good comments back from folks about the way the process, and uh, I hope everyone felt heard and respected and and um, happy with the outcome. Any questions or comments? Okay, and um, we can move on up then to the uh, the real estate project update, Brad. So um, I, I'm glad to have this time right now because I there are a few things I I need to to own up to and to uh, and to talk with you about and uh, sort of I think um, address a, a, an issue that I've been hearing back to me that I that I want to make sure I uh, correct and and learn from um, you know I uh, I've been in this role now for about four and a half years and but prior to that, for almost five years, I was the planning director for the city of Denver. And in that role, I actually worked on the, the master plan for the National Western Center. So this is this is a place very near and dear to me. And I, I know I've learned a lot about it. I've spent many, many hours working on it for almost a decade now. And um, uh, and because there are things I know about it, I don't always say what I know. and. I promised all of you that I and we would be 100% transparent and you would know what goes into every decision. 
And I didn't do that uh, on something, and I and I want to talk about it, and I want to apologize to all of you because if we are going to have uh, an honest relationship, that means we're going to own up when we make a mistake. And um, and I skipped an, an important step step with you, and there are going to be times when I can do what other people would like to see done, and there are times when there are inputs and realities where we're going to make uh, harder decisions. Um, I don't think this is a terribly hard decision, but it's one that uh, was kind of made that and then landed on you. Um, we, we've we been talking about the Equestrian Center for some time, and the Equestrian Center is the last building in phases one and two. And phases, and what's important about that, particularly in this what I'm going to talk about, Phase one and two need to be need to be completed before we can substantively jump into working on on the triangle next. And um, you know there were it was part of the National Western Center Master Plan. It's in the framework agreement. It's a critical component to phases one and two, and it's the last piece of phases one and two. And as Jen Wellborn is here, has talked to this group a few times. I mean, we've been looking at options, and we talked about. Potentially, the idea of adding a hotel to, to that site. Um, and uh, I got some feedback, but people were upset that we sort of skipped the step of talking why, you know, why is it a hotel? Why isn't it something else? And um, honestly, I will tell you my first, my first reaction, I'm human, I felt defensive, I felt nervous, and, but I just kind of sat with it and I realized that I think that is a that is a very fair criticism, and because of that, um, and started to think about it, so what 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 is my part in this? Well, my part is that the reality is that that site, the Equestrian Center site, it's a unique site on this campus. It is not it is not like the Triangle, and it is not like a lot of other sites. It has parameters within which we can we can operate that limits the options of what can be done on that site. We knew we wanted to do an equestrian center. As the as former planning director, I have always been very interested in activating the riverfront. I it was when I was the planning director, I was very interested in activating the riverfront. That the equestrian site is a beautiful site. It looks on this gorgeous new riverfront open space that I hope you will all join us on June 8th at the riverfront grand opening. And, uh, and it's turned out really, really well, and I think exceeded expectations. And so um, what else could be added there? So I had years ago been through the process of asking and answering the question, what else could go there? It's, it's a very challenging site. It is next to a festival concert site, uh, the yards. It is um, next to the equestrian center. And uh, any potential site, and it is next, and it is within what will be, for some significant parts of the year, a ticketed area. So it's not we can't we can't put a grocery store there. We can't put housing. You can't put an office. You can't put anything that would be publicly accessible on that location and have it function uh, because it's sometimes a ticketed area. So it limited the, the, the question, the answer to the question, what, what could go there? And, and truthfully, the only thing that can go there that makes sense, that would add to and help us do what we want to do on this campus, which is activate the campus, create more opportunities, and to create more opportunities for revenue streams, both for operations of the campus and, and for uh, benefiting the, the community investment fund and creating community benefits of all types through that process is is a hotel um and so i should have said that and explained that early on um it doesn't change my my knowledge of those facts but i'm a, i want to apologize because if we're going to work together on a complicated project this will not be the last time i make a mistake um, uh, and we will all make mistakes, and I sure hope that we are all going to have a relationship where making a mistake and owning it is safe to do, uh, and and that we can grow from it. I will tell you, I'm I'm learning from this process, and learning about what uh, transparency is, and and how to have a relationship with a 
large group of people that I may not see or talk to every day. Um, and so I'm a, um, I'm excited about the opportunity, at, but I'm sad that I may have damaged some relationships because this is, a, I really think this is an amazing opportunity. And so I want to talk a little bit about the opportunity. We uh, we were at city council committee here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we we will be at city council full council on Monday night, June fifth. And uh, what we're asking is to have the uh, is to move some project funding to allow us the authority to do a procurement to see if uh, the equestrian center and hotel <clears throat> are feasible. To, to get market response into does a hotel work there? We think that it does. Um, we think there are tremendous opportunities for community benefits and community experience in both the equestrian center and the hotel. We mentioned last time that we've had conversations with Metro State about them participating along with CSU's hospitality department around uh, having this be a teaching hotel. There's a teaching hotel on the Auraria campus that Metro State operates. Um, I think it's the Springfield uh, Suites that, that is the flag, is the brand. And it has been wildly successful. It is oversubscribed. It has changed many people's lives and created incredible opportunities. Teaching hotels aren't about teaching somebody how to cl clean a, a hotel room. It's about teaching operations and hotel development and hotel management, and hotel finance. Hotel accounting, hotel event um, experience and, and operations, hotel food and beverage management production, restaurants. It is an, is an incredibly robust program that could happen if, if we uh, uh, do this hotel. There are obviously jobs that come with this. There's jobs in design, there's jobs in construction, there's jobs in operation as well. Um, but as I've had some conversations, people have come up with some phenomenal ideas already. What if, you know, is this another location for a commissary kitchen? There'll be a very substantial kitchen in this hotel. Could there be a commissary kitchen in this hotel? And so what we're asking is to start this process, this conversation with you around uh, what's possible. And we're not asking for permission to do the project. We're not there yet. We're asking, to start the process with you that Steve Nally has gone over with this group a number of times around our um, community input process for our real estate projects. And I'm and again, I'm, I'm, I felt badly because this process that we have outlined hasn't been done before. This is, this is really innovative and, and a potential difference maker allowing, you know, having inviting community into the RFP writing process, having community in the room at the table when we're making selections for the successful uh, submitters. Um, we think this is a really incredible opportunity, uh, something that we think adds to the campus. I should have said all this before, <laughs> and I didn't. And so I'm sorry that I didn't do that. I'm trying to, I'm apologizing, and I hope you will forgive me for that. And I hope you won't. Um, uh, I hope you will stay open-minded about this discussion and what the possibility is here. Uh, even though I skipped the step, it was an important step. So I apologize, um, and I will stop talking now. Uh, and this is an opportunity, I think, for the CAC members. If you have any comments or uh, would like to add. Anything to the conversation at this moment about the real estate um, uh, projects and its process right now going before city council? Jen's here as well. For those of you who can't see the whole room uh, from uh, your homes, uh, but uh, Jen is here as well. And um, I think that's um, AE, is your hand up? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, Okay, Brad, I appreciate you uh, trying to frame uh, something you were uncomfortable with in the process and clarify it in the bigger picture, but I, I'm going to ask you to maybe clarify it with some clear, clearer components. Um, are you saying that uh, the hotel is not 
uh, open for discussion, even though it still need as, as a possible land use, even though it still needs to be studied. And I think there was some venue feasibility studies done early on in the process that may be relevant to that. I haven't looked at that document in a while. Secondly, um, uh, I, I just out of respect, and I appreciate the learning curve, the Parsons Brinkerhoff was selected, I believe it was Parsons Brinkerhoff with uh, a, a process that is exactly what you've said is not being done before and that you're learning. And just respectfully, that that is one of the beautiful things that is the legacy of that, that master plan. And I think there are, are differing memories about discussions around the waterfront and that kind of a thing among people. And I, and I respect that you did participate from your set of coordinates. But the participation of, of the committee members in discussions of what was in the RFP, the assigning of committee rep, CAC committee representatives to the actual interviews with the potential uh, folks that would be selected from an RFP. This is a tradition uh, and, a, and by design part of what was and should be carried forward. So I, I just have to say respectfully, um, not to jettison that it, it may feel new to you, but this has been the struggle to keep that feeling even if it was flawed coming into this. So can you clarify what it is that is open for discussion and what it is that isn't open for discussion on that land use? And does this relate to uh, the, uh, Steve, you may need to, may be able to help clarify this. Does this relate to the, I think it was the March, if I'm not mistaken, the March meeting where we described the series, Steve just, uh, presented the series of inputs in the engagement for, uh, for, for these, I think these types of discussions. So can you kind of factor those concerns in? So first of all, I'll start by saying, yeah, I, I was not aware that that was something that Parsons Brinker off or in that selection process was done. So um, helpful to understand the background. And uh, it's been it's been a, uh, a concern that I've heard raised since uh, uh, since being here in this role. So I, that's why I was calling it new, but I that is very helpful to understand. It's not, and I will stop saying it that way. Um, uh, the what is what is at question is we want to pursue an equestrian center and hotel and parking structure scenario on that site um, to explore whether it is feasible to work with community to inform the RFP that will go out if if. We go, if we go out to the, the marketplace and what comes back does not meet our requirements that we lay out in an RFP, then uh, then a hotel would not be built and and only an equestrian center would be built there. Um, so I think that I think that's about as concise as I'm, I can be because I'm not usually very concise. Do you want to talk about the process then, Steve, a little bit that um, A, you brought up? But before you get into that, can you Steve provide an overview how the community was engaged in this process? And he talked about it back in March. He said he was going to reach out to the community. Yeah. And input. Can you get into that before you? It's the same thing, I think. What was the, yeah. Let's see. And Caroline Gotcha has her hand up too. Oh, okay, right. thank you. Yes, Armando, it's, that's the same thing. This is AE. It's the same thing, Armando, so it's good. Hi, everyone. Steve Nally, good to see you all. Um, yes, it is the same thing. Uh, the idea is that, and I'll, I'll present the slide as part of my agenda item as well, the, the template or the process that we discuss, all the steps that we would take together to provide input into the procurement process for any, any type of real estate opportunity on the campus, whether that's Cut North or the Equestrian Center Hotel, parking garage, it was it was a, a plan to have future meetings, basically. It was a plan for future input and future community meetings. Uh, and and we'll, we're refining as we go uh, with constant feedback loop. And if we're not, if we have two meetings and we want a third one, we'll have a third one. Um, and keep talking about it as we input into uh, into 
the RFP process and the steps all the way along. And with both, both here, but also community wide. Mm -hmm. yeah. CAC plus and larger community meetings, not not just in this room, but several um, community wide meetings in Elyria and Swansea and, and in Globeville. So, but you're not answering the question. The question was community engagement. In the presentation, you said you were going to ask for input. What have you done since then? We haven't started. Yeah, we haven't had our first meeting yet. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the, the idea. Answer. Was that's to, the answer. Yeah, yeah that's the answer. The idea was let's talk about the process and then let's go start the process. We haven't started yet. We just know because I didn't invite you to a community event to lay out to provide an outline exactly what you're talking about right now. And right. you had stated that uh, you had a baptism or something, or some other commitment. I said that's fine. Baby shower. Yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But my point was, you know, staying on that path and staying on that dialogue to how Brad and his endeavor. To be able to share this to the, to the community so the community doesn't say they're getting caught off guard is to share uh, the piece of property that was in question and what some of that development site looked like and on site on campus and to further eliminate any kind of type of skepticism from the residents and to be able to provide some foresight and vision uh, to what uh, the National Western Authority and CSU was, was looking at yeah. in terms of development. Yeah, we're we're eager eager to start. We haven't yeah. we haven't started that yet. That's, that's exactly what we want to do. Uh, Caroline. Hi. Yeah. So I just wanted to clarify. So um, there will be more meetings on this topic this because I'm you know, pretty new here still. So I just wanted to be sure that we were talking about just the process that had already happened, but we haven't really gotten started on going forward with this and we just kind of wanted to clear things up before we do proceed or is this kind of a good time to ask questions about this topic or really just want to want to find out when to ask questions about this topic if it's you know not going to be right now and we're going to schedule more meetings about that one of the things that we're going to do later on in the meeting is um steve is going to go through the timeline again so you'll get a sense of when things are happening to Armando's question as well. When when does this all begin? Um, so that'll be part of that discussion. And then I think if it's as very specific to the project, probably that might be a time to ask the question, Caroline, depending on what your question is. Caroline, is that I'd, helpful? I'd like to add uh, one comment to, it, uh, to what you're stating right now. And that is at this meeting right now, at this point in time, if any uh, board members that would like to be part of this process uh, get on board right now with Steve and take note of it and make uh, make mention of it. So as we progress, why wait? If there's a, some of us that are interested right now and want to get and want to take the help develop this project right now instead of waiting, let's step up to the plate and stool right now. Put that cost for us to go uh, put the city council and let's do it. Why are we going to wait? Yeah, I think from my perspective, what we realize is. The CAC Plus is going to be one of the outlets where we provide information and share updates, but it's important that this not be the only outlet to community, and so it's important that we host community-wide meetings as well. Mm -hmm. So, because then again, what could happen is if four people raise their hand and then they go have a meeting, we don't want to go to someone that asks the question, like city council members say, what community engagement did you do? Oh, we had a meeting of community and there were four people there. That, that's, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. What I'm saying is that if there's interest right now among us present right now, let's get that interest and let's get the ball rolling. Why wait? I'm yeah. not saying to, to preclude anybody else. I'm just saying if we're here and we're ready to go, let's do it. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah, and I think we want both. I think. I, and I agree with that. Yeah. Philosophy. yeah. But if, you know, there comes a point in time we need to vote for the city council. Well, we're ready, you know, we're ready to go now. So yeah, that's my point. I think the uh, we're going to roll up our sleeves, <clears throat> assuming City Council approves the cooperation agreement. We're going to roll up our sleeves and we're going to dive into all the details at our next meeting and at future meetings. Um, I think what we want to present today is what are we asking City Council to approve? What you know, what is that step? It's a, it's a foundation. I mean, we sure we can dive into some details, but it might if City Council doesn't approve it, we're there's no point in even having the conversation. Yeah, but if there's residents that support the concept, why not step up to the plate and share that with sure. city council? Especially That's the fair. mayors that are coming up. Yeah. Why wait? I well, mean, I don't there, understand. Yeah, and there is a courtesy public hearing on Monday night, yeah. June yeah. 5th, and folks can certainly do that. Yeah, and that's my point. You yeah. know, if we're ready to go, let's do it. But we certainly can add that into the discussion. If, if it's okay, if you, we'll just we'll finish this discussion and then add that into what 
what Steve's going to bring up. So you see the process and where that. Well, I don't even see the process. I, you know, I'm ready to step yeah, up right now. For everybody. <laughs> let's step up. Let's go. Yeah. So we no, have fine. two more. Uh, Caroline, is your hand still up? <laughs> Sorry, I can lower it. I'm just trying to uh, determine if now is a good time for me to ask questions about this project or if we are going to um, save those questions for a later time. I think if we can hold if it's specific about the project to Steve's, and then you can get a sense of whether that's the right time to. Okay. Sure. Sounds good. We, Thanks. We're, we do. Yeah, Steve's going to do, Caroline, a presentation here in a little bit that's going to have a lot more detail in it. And I think that'll probably maybe answer your question, but if not, you'd have some context. Sounds good. Thank you. AE? Yeah, I just have a technical audio question. I'm having trouble hearing people at the tables. I don't know if I'm the only one, but if people could talk maybe a little slower, um, I don't know if there's anything that can be done from your end, but um, maybe not. Thank you for that feedback, AE. That's very helpful. Anthony? Yes. Anthony yelling. Oh, sorry. You're yelling at me. Jesus, startled me. I'm sorry if I did something. Uh, Anthony, you only go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I personally think this is a this is a terrific opportunity for not only the community, uh, but for our people. If this facility, um, of which there's been a lot of time and money dedicated to it, if it's really supposed to be a world class facility, I think a hotel and parking capacity is absolutely imperative. Um, there'll be a bunch of jobs created just from the construction of these. Uh, and moving forward, if this cooperation agreement should finalize the opportunity and the jobs itself is immense uh, for, the, for the community. Thank you, Anthony. I'm unclear what the cooperation agreement, can somebody just in a short yeah. say, what is the You're cooperation agreement? At, at the next agenda item, if we're okay. finished with this, if this agenda item, any other comments on uh, on Brad's presentation? Okay, and um, we'll go right straight in then to the the cooperative agreement, Steve. And speak up, please. Hi, everyone. Again, uh, this is the cooperation agreement. Uh, this is an agreement between the city and the authority. Those are the two parties of the agreement. The, the term of the agreement is until, until we execute or sign a development agreement with an, a developer to actually build the parking garage, equestrian center, and uh, the hotel uh, for three years. If we can't get to a development agreement in three years, then, then, then the uh, cooperative cooperation agreement uh, is terminated and we go a different route. The obligations, and these are really high level, there's several obligations in this agreement, but this is essentially what this agreement accomplishes. It asks the authority with issuing a request for proposals and for, procure a team to design and build an equestrian center and parking garage, design, build, operate, and maintain a full service hotel and associated parking for that hotel and to program other events in other National Western Center facilities, such as booking concerts in the Livestock Center or events in the Stockyards Events Center or even events in the Equestrian Center in itself. So that is what we are tasked with as, at the authority uh, for going out to the market and, and seeking someone to accomplish those tasks. The city is committing to assisting the authority in writing the RFP um, and for providing $5 million in financial support for this initial pre-development work. I'll get into a breakdown of how that 5 million can be used, uh, but that is, that is what the city is committing to. Uh, there is also quite a bit of city oversight and approval uh, authority through most steps of this procurement and process. Uh, there are other requirements such as seeking a partnership with Metro State University uh, for a teaching hotel, which was mentioned earlier. Uh, there's schedule and milestones uh, in the agreement, uh, facility programs, such as we need a certain number of horse stalls, and we should pursue a full service hotel with a minimum number of hotel rooms. 
currently that's I believe it's at 200 hotel rooms, but there could be more. And the market may come back and say, you don't, you can't have that many, you need less. Um, there are uh, certain deliverables that are mentioned in the agreement that we need to seek from the market. Uh, and there's this idea that the $5 million could be reimbursed back to the city as part of the construction uh, and, and deal that we're pursuing as part of the hotel, equestrian center, parking garage. Um, the agreement acknowledges that we will need to go back to city council multiple times for additional funding through this, through this project for the final pre-development work and for actual construction. I'll get into more detail and I'll mention all of those kind of off ramps and decision points we have with city council. So can we yes, see if there's sure. any questions on the agreement itself, the summary of, are there any questions? Uh, Amy, I don't know if your hand is still up or you have a new question. Okay, looks like. Any questions about the summary? And you're gonna get into more detail yes. as well. Okay. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I didn't see what is the, uh, in that group, wow. I'm looking for is there e other economic opportunity that will increase the stream of revenue for the National Western Authority in CSU yeah. and the stock show. I'm not sure if that's a line item. If it falls in there or if it falls somewhere else. And that, or if it's I, used to be in the RFP, they, they, need, they need to look and assess and make sure whatever they design, build, whatever it may be, that they're they take into consideration these op economic opportunities that are there or can exist. With maybe an additional X, Y, and Z, or you eliminate X, Y, and Z, and then enhance it you know, to produce additional revenue, and then the you know the overall community benefits. But it's not only the immediate community able to succeed; it's the international community with an icon facility such as this that should be the the best of both worlds. Yeah, I think there are a couple of things in here, and that those are also things we want to talk about. This will be this agreement is essentially our baseline requirements, but we can talk with the community after the cooperation agreement is approved of uh, what else are we seeking here? What what is in here that's just not far enough? What additional benefits from the, from the community are we seeking from the hotel operator? But two, two things I'll mention. One, a full service hotel on the campus adjacent to uh, event facilities is a competitive advantage in the marketplace. That doesn't yeah. exist in, in many other places, maybe downtown. Um, the other key piece here is program events, which is underlined. So we are seeking uh, from the market some kind of group that will also book other facilities. And that is that is generating revenue for the authorities for parking, concessions, the event revenue that would, would come from those. Um, that, is, that is a key piece. Uh, and we think that exists out in the marketplace. Um, think, think about you know a, a a group that would bring you know fifty concert nights with them, um, and they they said yeah we're gonna we're gonna build a hotel we're gonna block rooms in the hotel hotel for those fifty nights and we're bringing the best concerts into the livestock center as an example. There could be many other examples there. I think it's more than that. It's just, you know, even if you look at the parking infrastructure, when you're talking about the parking garage, there should be a some type of a shuttle that connects. I'm not talking about light rail, uh, light, uh, light rail shuttle that goes from the hotel or the parking garage directly over to the light rail station there or the one on Fox. You know, there's got to be the multiple uh, infrastructures to ease the facility of coming in and out of this iconic facility in the city county of Denver. So it's just, it's, you know, it's not just the structure itself, it's also the other amenities that uh, to compose it. Right. Good point. I told Steve I wasn't going to interrupt. But that's, exa <laughs> but that's exactly the kind of thing that we want to have. That's exactly why we want to have these community meetings before the RFP is written, as well as after the CC responses, because we have a great idea. We should include what could you do to connect the site, the hotel, the work that you're doing here to our light rail stations. That's a fabulous thing to include I mean, there. Yeah, so that's, it's, that's, it's, that's it's I just want to. It's real simple. It's simple as it. We have the technology to do it right now. And the, and the manufacturers here exist here. And I'll give you an example. Over at Panasonic, you know they have these bus, electronic buses. They run yeah. off solar. All you got to do is say, okay, I'm going from the National Western Stock Show 
over to the light rail station on, on Bryant Boulevard. You click it in your phone, it comes, the, the light, the, uh, uh, the solar panel or the whatever you want to call it, comes, picks you up, takes you over, then comes back. And where does it go? It goes right along the bike, uh, the bike road path. So this technology, it currently exists right now. So this thing is not nothing new and innovative and created and forward thinking. It exists right now. But we just need, we need people like you to to make sure that it ends up in the RFP. Right. So that we're putting our that foot forward. But that's all I wanted to say. Right. So it's like, you know, that's the deal. If it's not slick, innovative, creative, and forward thinking, why would I want to come here? Why don't I go to this one where I can't experience something like that? <laughs> I come to the question center and I have a beautiful horse show and not only that, it's easy to get in and out, and I'm taking my family. So all those things need to come together and gel, and again, just complement and supplement what's currently on campus. That's what I'm saying. Maybe if you go a little bit further in the presentation, show how you want to be seeking community input will occur. Does iPhone 61 want to have a question or a comment? Okay. <laughs> Um, that is one of those. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes we can. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so this is Gail. And I um, just had a question. Um, can you all use that text message service to let us know when um, when this is going to be brought to um, council or committee um, just so we can be aware of you know, when things are happening, I know sometimes they happen fast. And I think that could alleviate some of the, um, you know, transparency issues. Sure, we could send that, we can send around that information by text, as well as through the, e through email. Yeah. Good, good idea. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, I'm going to keep cruising. We're going to get to the community piece. Uh, I want to talk about the $5 million and how it's going to be used. Um, can I put you on the spot sure. for a second? Yeah, the first bullet and yep. where the $5 million is coming from. And oh, sure. That you know how to check. <laughs> so in 20, uh, I think it was 2019, um, the city set aside $5 million um, to support its efforts on the um, private public partnership that it was seeking to develop the um, triangle. And then COVID hit and we struggled through for a few months and decided that we could not move forward in good conscience at that time, um, given the challenges that we knew were ahead and we didn't really understand yet. So we paused that. And then in the beginning of 2021, we decided not to move forward with that procurement. So there, $5 million was set aside as a stipend mm -hmm. to the two teams that we had shortlisted to provide responses in that P3 procurement process. Those stipends would have been paid out to two teams to pay them for the intellectual property that they were providing to the city. And um, so upon that cancellation, that $5 million has been sitting in a capital fund that and that capital fund, the way we set up our capital funds, an ordinance goes to city council and has a specific use for those funds. And that specific use had the word National Western Center Triangle. And so we can't use it unless we move it to a different purpose. So this is money that can't be used because we're not moving forward on the triangle with a stipend because that's what the use was in that fund. And we are going to use, put it in a different capital fund whose use says National Western Center Equestrian Center support. Yeah. Okay, well, so well, my comment was, why can't you just amend that? Amend. Well, that's essentially what they're doing. <laughs> I mean, it, but it still requires, it requires exactly the same process. So that's what we're doing, is we're going to council to ask them to change how it can be used. Okay, so. These are the two uses for the $5 million. Uh, the first category is to fund the work the authority will do to procure the design and construction of the question in a garage hotel and hotel operator. This includes community engagement. This is the robust community engagement that we will have to do as we step through, start with the community to inform the RFP. Uh, we need additional in-house support 
for this project and we need additional counsel. Uh, so that those are examples of how those dollars will be used in that first category. The second one is the initial pre-development work. And this is what we're seeking uh, from the proposers. Um, I'm not gonna read all of these, but these are examples of things that we'll, we'll be getting, a site plan, design, uh, how these things work together. Um, it gets us, 5 million will only get us so far. It will not fund all of design. These are substantial structures. Uh, and that's why we're calling it initial pre-development work. It gets us to that initial stage where we can make a decision collectively, uh, uh, kind of go, no go on, on what we've seen so far. I think, yeah, go I think on that overall site plan, it needs to be overall slash conceptual site plan, because correct me if I'm wrong, Brad, that's what the city wants to see. They want to see a conceptual overall plan in addition to the site plan. How does your concept come together? Yep. And I think that sure. word con uh, overall conceptual plan needs to be added in there. Well, Otherwise, we're missing the whole thing. Well, so I just want to be clear, though, that um, the five million does not fund the proposal. I know, but the word we're, we're expecting to see that in the RFP. No, I'm, the plan. I'm, expect, I'm, I'm expecting to see the concept, the word concept in there. Overall concept review plan. Sign, overall, overall concept review plan. I mean, if, I'm, you've been in real estate. You built something before. You don't just okay. Here's a piece of land. What are you going to do with it? Okay, where's your concept behind it? If you don't have a concept, how you can put a budget? How yeah. you can put anything behind I, it? I see that concept as a proposal that we're not paying for. They're competing on that concept. I understand, but yeah. what are you competing for if you don't know what it, if you don't know what the concept is? Yeah. I, I we, yeah, we, we can talk more. Page, yeah. I think we're saying the same thing. We can talk more. Any other questions on how the money is used? How the money is spent? Yes, I have a question. Um, so just to be clear, the five million dollars that was set aside um, for basically technical support for these two um, developers or partners. Um, so the Denver residents, they don't have to vote on moving that money to another fund. It, it just city council would decide that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, this isn't debt. This is just, these are funds that already exist that are already sitting in a capital fund. Okay. It's just, it's just moving it from one part of the budget to the other. Okay, but, um, but we still have to figure out the triangle. So couldn't some of that money be used um, for technical assistance for the triangle? So there's a couple of different things going on here. One is that um, this $5 million isn't the only money that will ever be available or ever be needed for the triangle. If we don't, if we don't move forward with the equestrian center um, and we don't do a procurement now for that, we won't, we won't be able to tear down the event center and there won't be enough land on the triangle to pursue the things that we were pursuing and the, the kinds of things. I don't mean the, the way we're doing it, but um, so we really think it's important to move forward now. I would expect that the new administration and the new city council will be very interested in talking about moving forward with the triangle in some form or fashion. And I imagine that will bring with it funding to explore those things. And whatever path they choose will undoubtedly have funding for community engagement, planning, and communication. So I don't want to go too far out on the limb because I don't know who's going to be mayor and I don't know who's going to be on the city council. And I, you know, we haven't made those plans yet, but I, um, this is this this five million dollars is has been sitting for three years, and we'd really like to put it to good use on the campus now. That doesn't mean there won't ever be more um, resources for moving forward on the on the triangle in the future. Thank you. Um, before we move forward, um, the interpreters are, have a difficult time when we talk over one another because they can't actually interpret both voices. So if we let one person speak and then complete their comments and then the next person speaks, so that will make it easier for our interpreters. Um, AE, you have your hand up. 
Uh, regarding the scoping on this, and I feel like that's one of the founding um, uh, obligations of what the original NWCCAC and what I would hope this group would be, not just an outlet. Um, if people go to the master plan and look, uh, do, do a word search of equestrian, go to the seventh, I think it's the seventh character area. I think it's in the 80s, uh, the page numbers are in the 80s. And it talks a lot about, I believe it's, it, somebody can correct me if I'm doing this from memory, but if somebody can correct me uh, on the authority staff, I believe those are the initial accountabilities to whoever is retained to do these concepts. I, I don't recall hotel being mentioned. I am not necessarily opposed to the hotel, but I am honestly confused about how that came about, even listening to your uh, presentation, Brad, I'm confused and I'm not sure if anyone else is, but I do recall conversations about whether student housing could happen, uh, whether, uh, you know, if you can build a hotel, you can build any type of uh, accommodations that fit that format of living. And again, I am not opposed to a hotel. I just feel like, how has this conversation been scoped and where does it show in the master plan? So, but fundamentally, uh, what the design, there are design accountabilities and starting points in the master plan that I think a lot of people worked on and that had a lot to do with how to make this feel uh, like it wasn't just an implanted uh, set of arenas uh, unrelated to the character of the neighborhoods. You want to check that, no, yeah, uh, I'll start. And the um, yeah, I don't, I don't think that you know in the in National Western Center Master Plan, it, it it certainly didn't say but let's put a hotel right there. It did talk campus wide about hospitality uses and this being a tourism hub and those kinds of things. Um, as as our understanding of the campus has evolved. Uh, and as we understood more about the equestrian center itself, an opportunity arose. It's like something else could be here. And what what else, what could go there? It's, it's, it's really, it's a list of one. And, and it has the added advantage of if it is on this side of the tracks, if, it, if it's in phases one and two, it will lessen the burden of what needs to go over in the triangle, creating more room for other stuff we want to do. So, um, but Steve, why don't you add to that? Yeah, you're, you're right, AE, that the master plan did not say hotel here. Um, I mean, in fact, if you look at the illustrative site plan of the master plan, it's very different than what is, what is built today. Um, but the key, uh, element the equestrian center was very much contemplated because that is a, that is one of the big and in the framework agreement it's called essential new facility and that that is a very critical component of the bigger pieces the master plan did speak to complementary uses that will support the success of the of the campus mixed use um, bolstering the regional tourism uh, and and so we 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 find that the hotel does just that. It is very helpful and, and it is complementary of the activities that we have on the campus. Uh, but you, you are correct. It didn't say hotel here. It did emphasize uh, that, uh, and I just brought it up just to look where hotels are mentioned, the master plan. It, it, I do remember now and that the there was a feasibility study done um, that I think is relevant because part of the attraction for doing uh, this entire uh, development was how it could uh, enrich local hospitality industry, and that is a that is different from creating a, an additional competing um, hospitality venue. And again, I am not necessarily opposed, um, Steve. The phrase that you just read, I think, ought to be printed out or you know like called forward as this is the this is the this is the framework we're discussing. Uh, uh, the, you, the, the reasoning for the hotel, every time I hear somebody say, we, we, we discovered that there was this opportunity, I want to make sure I understand who the we is. And I'm assuming it's the working committee inside the authority or something that's looking at this because we haven't had a, 
uh, you know, a, a large uh, open broad discussion about it. So that would be important to understand that how the hotel not only enhances just the equestrian center, but for it to be fully embraced, how does it fit within the full dynamic of the entire campus meeting its best overall mission, certainly with the benefits to the neighborhoods being paramount. And I've, there's some obvious things that can be listed in that, but I'm just saying in general, as we go forward with this discussion. Other comments? Okay. This is the schedule that is in the cooperation agreement. These are kind of general quarters um, of kind of goals and milestones to hit as uh, assuming city council approves the cooperation agreement. Uh, work through issuing the request for proposals and work through the procurement process through the end of 2023. Uh, make, a, make a selection in 23, start work on pre-development in the beginning of next year, uh, and and work through basically design all the way through 24 and and so we write a basically a development agreement um, finish design and start construction in Q1 of 25 open the doors sometime in 27 so that's kind of the full spectrum of and milestones within the within the cooperation agreement there are several other schedules we need to talk about of how we work together how we work together to get to the RFP um that that's that's not contemplated in this agreement but um this is the snapshot from that agreement itself i'm gonna, I'm gonna keep cruising here yeah, yeah. Um, okay so this is the timeline that basically gets us from city council approval of the cooperation agreement to uh to q2 of 25 and includes all of the decision points and off ramps additional visits, we have to go back to city council and ask for more dollars and ask for um, ask for them to approve a development agreement. Mm -hmm. So Q2 of 23 is where we are today, working with the community uh, and continue to work with the community through that whole process. Q3 is to issue the RFP. Uh, Q, Q4, we, we actually received the proposals. And at that point, beginning of 2024, we make a decision. Do we like what we see in these proposals? Are we willing collectively to make a uh, to select a partner? If not, we stop, and the city builds an equestrian center. That's it. So when you stop. say off ramp to COP, does that mean you stop? That means we stop, and COP means certificate of participation, which is the funding source that will be used to build the equestrian center. So at the first. Uh, section of 2024 with the down arrow off ramp yep. to COP. That means if you're not satisfied collectively, right. that it stops and the equestrian center goes forward, but nothing else goes forward. That is correct. That's what the red arrow means. Just the equestrian center goes forward. Yeah. Yes. Steve, so just a question on 2023 yeah. community engagement starts Q3 and Q2. then. Q2 yep. and then in Q3 you issue an RFP. So I'm that could be optimistic. Yeah, yeah, it could I be. mean, yeah, it's, it's really quick. But yeah. my question is hopefully we avoid, and I think with the triangle originally, this is what happened is that there was input on a triangle RFP, and then the RFP process became like nobody can know anything. Right? Everything was like yeah. this can't be shown like what we're asking them to bid on so i'd like some sort of assurance for the community that as that their comments are integrated into the rp right. so how can you do that yeah it's a good question i think we have to work with attorneys to make sure we're not understood we're not impacting the competitive process right. we have to honor that right. it has to be competitive if it leaks to one competitor one proposer or not the other they have an advantage so we have to be very careful 
I, let me talk about that in the, the meeting series, because uh, at some point it gets, we, we have to be pretty quiet about the language so that the proposers can come. I forward. understand that, yep. but I also know that that was where a lot of angst was yep. with the triangle, yep. is we were, we kept asking questions about what could be in here and what, what are people including, and even after you got responses, it's like we can't tell you anything. Right. And yep. that was... <laughs> Yeah, problem. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's. it's I tough, understand. You know? It is tough, but you know, just put on your thinking cap and yep. figure out a way to figure it out. You know, keep the community, you know, comfortable with that. Okay, so we talked about the first off ramp. That's before a selection is made. Um, an example of that off ramp could be that um, the market doesn't think a hotel would be supported. It doesn't, that's, the hotel just doesn't make sense here. Um, hotel operator, it, it's not going to be successful. We might hear that. Um, we can build a hotel, but we're not doing anything for the community. We might hear that. That's an off ramp. You know. Um, so the, there could be many other examples, but those are things that we're, we, we don't like what we see, and this includes the community as well. Um, so there will be community members on the selection. Uh, as part of that process, that may have to sign of NDA um, to agree to confidentiality somehow, some way. Um, but that's what that offering means. Okay, we enter into a pre. Assuming we want to move forward, we enter into a pre-development agreement, and this details out all the design phases and gets us to another decision point where we run out of money. We need more money. We we spend through the five million. We have to go back to city council and ask them to fund final pre-development work. If we, again, if we don't like what we're seeing, another off ramp. If city council doesn't want to fund, uh, the, you know, additional design, that's probably an off ramp. Um, assuming that all the, all that goes well, we we move into final the final design deliverables. GMP stands for guaranteed maximum price. What this thing is going to cost. Um, the authority issues notice to proceed. That's what NTP stands for. And we move into to 25. We work on a um, on a actual development agreement, construction development agreement. We go back to city council. We fund construction. Uh, if we're if we're not comfortable at that point, there's another offering. We've spent quite a bit of money by then, but you know. That there is another offering. Anything you want to add to that? Are there any questions about this timeline from the CAC? How can it be expedited? It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty quick. Right yeah. Yeah. Uh, ready to go. <laughs> we feel we feel like this is pretty aggressive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Steve. Okay. All right, this is a slide that you all have seen before. We talked about this at the March meeting. This is that template that we could apply to any real estate opportunity on the campus. Mm -hmm. The idea, to your point, Ann, is that we, we meet often in the, in the beginning, mm -hmm. um, setting goals, refining this process, and meet again around high-level objectives of what is going into the RFP itself. That we we cannot share the RFP. I don't I don't think we can share the RFP with the community because no, then yeah. then we've kind of ruined the whole purpose of a competitive process. But once it's out, you can verify. I mean, it, yeah, once, know, it's once it's provided, it, yeah. yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, the we are not anticipating with the equestrian uh, hotel parking garage that we're not anticipating an RFQ. We're going to jump right to RFP, uh, and that kind of fourth meeting we've we've discussed is who's on the selection committee. What are our high level objectives? We're about to issue this thing. What are, you know? What are folks concerned about? This is generally what it contains, not the exact words, but what is in it. Um, and that exclusive negotiation with the successful bidder piece that is potentially after a selection is made. Uh, but in that phase where it is confidential, we can we can only provide updates at that point. Um, if we are if we're working between with two bidders and negotiating with two different bidders, which may not be the process, 
Again, it gets into that confidential part. Um, ideally, we work to the big orange circle selection is made, and we are introducing that partner to this group and to the community and starting to build that relationship. So, Steve, can you clarify that in the left hand side of the of the um, slide? <laughs> What's that name? The slide that it it says one to three meetings, but it could be it could be four meetings. It could, it could be, be five meetings. meetings. Yeah. It's, there's not a limit on the number of those meetings. It's going to take as long as it takes to to get there. All although knowing that there is a there's always a push from the other side too. Right. But Armando wants us to move quickly. Yeah. No, I mean, I'll give you an example. Daryl Watson, you can go straight to his website. He says he can expedite the planning process to 30 days. How he can do that is beyond me. I work in technology, I <laughs> and I don't see that happening. I mean, you get a soil report, it takes 30 days. Yeah. Then you got to go in front of city planning, and then you got to look at the soil report. If there's any conditions in that soil report, then there's any movement in clay or anything, you have to have an engineer stand there and watch you pull the dirt out, put new dirt in. Yeah. That stuff, you know. I mean, yeah, I think he's fictitious, but yeah. But to your earlier point of we need a connector for the neighborhood, that's in that first meeting or second meeting. Those types of ideas. And we're going to try to provoke ideas. We're going to come to you with all kinds of ideas to get, get uh, your wheels turning um, just to have a, a good conversation. We hope you all will do the same. Or, and we'll, the idea is that we have two meetings, it could be more. That we're setting the stage in the first meeting. This is the land. This is the opportunity. This is what we're pursuing. What else? What else do we want here? What else do we want to seek? What benefits do we want? Um, neighborhood connections, a great one. CIF contributions, another one. Um, come back and continue to talk about it um, several times. So are you done? Uh, I got one more. <laughs> So we met back in March of 22 to talk about that previous slide, and, and this has kind of been the process ever, ever since that conversation happened. Um, we Jen has been here you know, months ago to talk about Equestrian Center. I didn't put that date up there, but so we briefed City Council. We went through our Authority Finance Committee and our board as info items to update them. We, um, Jen briefly updated the CAC at our last meeting um, at, the, at the end. Um, we uh, went back to finance committee and finance committee recommended approval of the cooperation agreement to uh, to our board and between our board meeting and finance committee we went to finance and governance committee of the city council on the 16th of May um, that was a 5-1 vote to move that to move the cooperation agreement uh, onto the council floor we're here today uh, the city council here, public hearing, courtesy public hearing, and uh, a vote on the agreement will occur on June 5th. And then there will be the second reading to uh, vote on appropriation of funds. Am I saying that right? On, on June 12th. That's the agreement approval schedule. Starting June 5th, we're, we are going to be scheduling public meetings of the community and um, Starting with the CAC on the for the day, the June date, twenty eighth and 29th. Yeah, but for the public meeting, CAC yeah. is it, it's in place of the CAC oh, June meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And there'll be two different locations. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One in the Lirias Wansia and one in Glowville. That will be the beginning of those those time those meetings that uh, were in Steve's chart. So again. There's three listed there, but they're not limiting that. Right. It's going to yeah. take what it takes. So maybe two, to your point, maybe it's two meetings because you got your one. Well, I'm going to make a proposition right now. Anthony, if you and I can work together for that June 5th meeting to get a public statement on support of the, the support of this project, you know, I can get a, a, a draft to you, then we can look at it, and then you can send it to city council. Okay. Okay. Oh, Caroline. Hi, yeah, I just I wanted to clarify. So between now and this uh, city council hearing and vote on agreement that's for June 5th, are there going to be any um, community meetings or was that that we're not going to have any community meetings between now and when the city council has their hearing and their vote on the agreement? That's correct. We will start the community engagement process after 
It, it just the, the formality of the council vote is important. Yeah. So the council has to vote before we get the community to then discuss basically what they voted on? No. No. It begins the process. It, it takes us to the first meeting, essentially. I guess I'm just wondering why the why we're bringing it to the city council for a vote before we bring it to the community. It, it's the money. And you want to go over that again, Jen? I don't think we want to waste the community's time, Caroline, going through this process if for whatever reason city council were to say no. I, right? think, I think Caroline why we aren't having a public meeting to talk about what city council is going is being asked to approve. Caroline, could you clarify your did you hear that discussion? Could you clarify your question? Yeah, um, it sounded like it was answered by hearing that we don't want to waste the community's time if it turns out city council hasn't even approved it. That makes sense. I was wondering why we might uh, not go to the community before we go to city council. But if it's, you know, that kind of answer where we don't want to waste the community's time having all these meetings just to go to city council and not even get it approved. I can understand that. Yes, that's right. Thank you. And there's additional off ramps when the community is involved in our process to say we don't like this anymore. Right. Yeah. And AE has her hand up. AE. Yeah, I I I understand and accept that you the um, uh, city council has to uh, okay the money to make the process Steve is laying out for us relevant. I think the key question is that $5 million uh, on the slide where th th that $5 million has been scoped, and I don't know where the discussion with the, the uh, neighborhoods and the various communities came in to arrive at the fund, to, uh, and somebody can clarify that from the staff or whatever, to fund the work that the authority will do procuring the design and construction for equestrian center, garage, hotel, and hotel operator. So that that would be that would have been the moment to say, help you know help us uh, all feel ownership with the hotel or the concept of it, you know that that to me is a decision that was made about how this is being scoped in terms of using that five million dollars. So if I'm so that that would be my question, kind of along the lines of what Caroline is saying, is where where was the. Um, you know, anyway, I, I think you understand what I'm saying, but it's a it's a question. Uh, it's a question of scoping and and fully participating in where the hotel fits in the most dynamic discussion of the project. That's all. So let me just try to address that really briefly. The amounts available to the authority are just going to support the work that's going to need to happen for the procurement. So there, that will support community engagement in the form of meetings, in the form of getting information out, those sorts of things. It also will support the legal and financial analysis that needs to happen and the drafting of the RFP for the input that the authority needs to have into those processes. That long, the, the vast majority of this money will be used in, in pre-development deliverables. And you, we do want you to be in the conversation about what those deliverables are. The long list you see there are recommendations that are in the cooperation agreement, but that is a part of what the RFP will ask for. And a part of the RFP will be a sample pre-development agreement. And that scope goes in that document. So these are all things that are yet to come. This is a very, we are, we are doing a lot of upfront work that is usually a little opaque, frankly. And you're seeing that happen before we even start the work on, there is not a draft RFP anywhere. It's not, we haven't started. So this is a very, very beginning of that process. So you haven't missed any opportunities here. I guess is what I'm saying. Am I mistaken then that that sentence on the top, that sentence does not, are you saying that that sentence does not limit uh, the, what has to be delivered in concept by to uh, a garage hotel, equestrian center and, and uh, garage? I, I mean, that sounds to me like a specific definition if that money is moved, that it has to be used 
for that, the RFP is going it to follow to, It does have to be used for the, I'm sorry, I'm now I'm the one talking over somebody, I'm sorry. The, it does have to be used for this project, and this project is the equestrian center, the parking garage, and the hotel. It does, but but you, I think what you and Caroline had asked about was sort of this scope issue. Can the community have an input into the scope of the pre-development work? And the answer to that is a resounding yes. But part that of that scoping would be whether the hotel is a done deal. That's what I'm saying. And I and I'm saying again, I have not I do not oppose the hotel, but I just want us to be really clear what this process is. It sounds to me that this has been scoped to include a hotel and that yes. that is not something that can change. Pursue it to the I mean, the, this is part of the conversation that Brad's already had today. Yes, we do intend to include a hotel in this procurement and we'll see what happens. And that's a decision made at the authority level in the authority office, is that correct? With the city. With the city, which is one of the partners to the National Western Center. What about the other partners? Is it a consensus decision? Yes, I think the partners are all on board. This is all to be transparent. I hope you understand. I'm asking these questions just to make it completely transparent so everyone understands what this process is in full. Thank you, a Angela. Yes, AE, I wanna thank you as well. Um, a lot of good clarification there. Uh, my question actually is directed to Armando. Armando, are you saying that you want to work with Anthony Aragon to draft a letter that the CAC supports this? No, what I'm saying is that Anthony and I are residents in GTS. Yeah, Anthony Yellman. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I can't, there's noise and I can't hear what you're saying. So it's Anthony Yelnick, not Anthony Aragon. Okay. And so then we, say it again, Armando. We as residents, him and I are residents, he lives a block away from me. As residents, I'm not speaking for CAC, this is advisory council. I'm speaking on, on behalf of myself and Anthony, that we as individuals and residents of GES or 80216 support the concept uh, in a written form of agreement to city council to go forward. I don't need to wait and wait for all this other stuff to go forward. I'm ready to go now. Okay, so I just want to clarify, it would just be the two of you. Well, anybody else that wants to come on board. I mean, Steve well, says no. he wants to wait. I mean, you know, I ain't got time to wait. <laughs> what? Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, A.E., your hand's still up. Okay. All right. Steve, did you, are you, Steve, are you finished? I have one more slide and it's my contact information. <laughs> <laughs> like take pictures of this, everybody. <laughs> okay. Any further questions? All right. Good job, Brad. So we're going to now move to uh, community updates and ask if any members of the CAC have any updates uh, happening in the community. Yeah, I do. Right. Okay, go ahead. Okay. My name is Armando Playon. We're doing a mayoral forum on Saturday, May 27th, over at Birdseed or 4400 Grand Street. Uh, both candidates, the mayoral candidates, Kelly and Mike, will be there. In addition to that, we will have Candice Tabaka and Daryl Watson. We'll be there at one o'clock from District Nine. So please uh, come join us. If you have been to any other uh, forums, I'm sure we'd like to have you and express some of your concerns. And what our directive is, we're looking at it, at it from an environmental perspective. How can these two candidates, again, this is a good topic, how can they ensure us that we get the resources that we need to further develop the National Western Center, the authority, the CSU campus, and keep this one of the iconic uh, locations in the world, and also further develop GES and 80216 and complement city and county agenda. What's the date? May 27th, Saturday. Time? One to, uh, one to, one to three o'clock. And at, it's going to be at the Globo Rec Center. I'll, I'll repeat it again, Saturday, May 27th at, from one to three. 
Thank you, Armando. Sure. Sarah, did you have something? I do. Yes, this is Sarah Miley from CSU. Spur. Um, I just wanted to share a quick deeper dive into one community program that we have, and that is our summer camps for youth. We have two camps that still have space in them, a musical theater workshop. Um, that is for high school students, June 5th through 10th. And we also have an engineering camp for middle school students, July 17th through 21st. Um, students in GES 80216 students um, can get scholarships to cover the cost of the camps for free. Um, we also have a sports camp that's free for everyone, but there is a wait list for that one already. Um, you can find out more information, just Google CSU Spur Summer Programs. And if anyone has any ideas on how um, we should continue to get the word out or future camps that you're interested in seeing from CSU Spur, I just wanted to pause and get any feedback. We're really excited to launch um, more summer programs next year too. Caroline. Thank you, Sarah. Caroline? Yeah, I have a question about that. Um, do you have any like printed out promotional materials that you can um, set out to have available at places like the Birdseed Collective, um, which is the Globeville Rec Center, um, or other rec centers, or even like the Tepeyac Community Health Center? Because I think that would be a really great way to help spread the word to people in the neighborhood. We do, and we have been putting them in summer folders and things, but I will check with our team if we've gotten them to those sites. That's a great point. Um, yeah, if anyone yeah. Wants Oh, sorry. No. Um, if anyone wants to download the flyer, you can download it in English and Spanish too on our website if you want to share it digitally. But thank you for that, Caroline. I'll circle back. Yeah, I was going to also mention Prodigy Coffee Shop here in Globeville might be another good place to leave some of these flyers because I know people just sometimes mm -hmm. they see one walking past and it really catches their eye in a way that maybe online kind of doesn't. So just wanted to mention that. Perfect. I think we have a stack, or we did, but then I have to check if they're still there. Thanks, Caroline. AE? You're on mute, AE. Lost her. OK. Um, Lori, I know you're on the, uh, on the call. Do you want to mention uh, Loteria on June 2nd? Yeah, thank you so much. So we, um, my name is Lori. I am the Director of Program Impact at Focus Points. And we have an event on June 2nd called Loteria. Um, it is our primary fundraiser for our programs that we do for the community. And if you put your email in the chat, I'm happy to send you an invite. Did you hear me? I can't hear anything. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, maybe you just text her. Catherine, can you hear me? I hear you. Okay. I'm not. I'm not getting any sound. I may have gotten cut off. There's another event uh, at uh, Bruce Randolph with the uh, candidates on uh, May 25th tomorrow, six to seven thirty p.m. The um, Colorado for the Common Good. Uh, I, I I hope folks come to both of them, and we have a great showing, both what Armando was announcing and the other one. So I don't know if I got cut off or if the sound is gone, but there it is, <laughs> six to seven thirty to tomorrow night at Bruce Randolph. Thank you, AE. Okay, Anthony Aragon, can you? Yep. Yeah, uh, so good evening, everybody. Anthony Aragon. I have a few. Um, you know, sort of what's on the horizon uh, over the next uh, couple of several months, I would say. So uh, due to inclement weather last week, um, which I'm glad that it did thunderstorm really good because it was sunny in the morning and we're like, why did we cancel? Or, um, but the Riverfront opening and celebration is going to be on June the 8th. 
and it's going to be uh, in partnership with CSU Spurs um, backyard opening of, of the space behind Hydro. It's going to be a joint uh, community event. Again, free food. Um, uh, or mom, mom uh, live music, uh, activities for the kids. Um, so we hope that you will join us. Uh, we will make sure that we get uh, updated flyers to uh, all of the rec centers, uh, Prodigy Coffee House. Uh, we will send it over our texting service and also social media. Uh, we're just uh, revising the flyer uh, to include both events, um, but that's going to be on Thursday, June 8th from 4 to 7 p.m. Um, over the next couple of months, we will begin to have a discussion with the CAC Plus related to roles and responsibilities, and we're going to be building upon the original guidelines and criteria that were adopted on uh, August 28th of 2016. Uh, that will be the the sort of the framework uh, in which we will operate from uh, and add additional information uh, so that we can develop in partnership with all of you uh, roles and responsibilities of CAC plus community members moving forward. Uh, we also are going to begin discussions at a board subcommittee level with our community benefits committee to begin uh, discussing stipends for community members that attend our monthly CAC plus meetings moving forward. Uh, attendance, you know, guidelines around who's eligible to receive a stipend if they attend our community meetings. Uh, very preliminary stages, but we are uh, going to be begin discussing uh, the idea of stipends for community members at our uh, June uh, community benefits committee meeting. Um, additional meetings, uh, as uh, we've discussed tonight, I think we recognize there is a lot of work on the horizon, and we appreciate the monthly uh, CAC plus community meetings, but we really also want to make an effort and a commitment that we're in community uh, as we begin discussing these, the, the equestrian center and hotel, um, also Cuff North, which Steve has mentioned before. So additional meetings will likely begin to get scheduled uh, over the summer and early fall. Uh, and it's really around, uh, we want to be in community. Uh, so the first opportunity is going to be uh, June 28th. We will be at the Johnson Rec Center. Uh, and then on June the 29th, uh, we will be at Laredon Hall. Uh, and those will be community-wide discussions related to the procurement process uh, and more information about the Equestrian Center Hotel um, and possibly Cup North. But then looking at the summer months and again early fall that we will uh, be in community more often than just the monthly CAC meetings. But we will make every uh, effort to give you as much advance notice as possible. Uh, we will always provide updates at the monthly CAC meetings if we are in community uh, so that the CAC plus community members are hearing uh, the thoughts uh, that the community has related to these to these projects. Um, any questions? I have two more. Didn't I just touch on the flyer? Uh, that's going to be sent out to households. Oh, yes, thank you. So uh, what we're going to do again, what we felt worked really well with the board, the community board seat recruitment is for those two community meetings on June 28th and June 29th. We will be mailing a postcard to every household in 80216. Uh, additionally, working with, uh, it might be a bit of a challenge because the schools might be out and I don't know that they'll do the Thursday folders, but we will determine how we can work with the schools. But again, um, we will print flyers and have those available at all of the rec centers, the library, uh, Prodigy Coffee House, um, text, texting. And also working with CREA. Oh, yeah, and working with CREA results. They will be canvassing in the community. Uh, in June, sharing that information as well. Uh, two more, uh, what's on the horizon? This is just something I wanted to share as a reminder that the space that we occupy, which is our office, uh, this conference area is available for the community free of charge. Um, and it includes, uh, I would say it includes nights and weekends if I have to um, stay late and open the doors and close them or come in on a weekend, I'm happy to do so. 
but we want to uh, let community know that this space is available complimentary. Additionally, uh, right now the Stockyards Event Center is open and is available for uh, events. Uh, there is a standard rate for the community at large. Um, GES residents and 80216 specifically, they get 50% off of that rate. Uh, so we want to encourage community members and organizations to, to utilize the Stockyards Event Center uh, for a small fee for our offices for free. And then finally, just a reminder to please sign up for the text uh, messaging platform. Again, we're not going to uh, overwhelm you with text. I think we're limited to six, six texts per month. And I don't even think uh, we even send six at this point in time. So that's just sort of a, a look on what's on the horizon. I think that uh, it's going to be a busy summer and early fall. And that's it. Come join us on June 8th. Yeah. Flowers, faith painters, tablers, giveaways. So it'll be really fun. Like a band. Fate band. Yeah. Thanks to yeah. our Honda. Yeah. Honda's band, yeah. yeah. It's going to be fun. Any final comments from the CAC? Good job. Thank you. Any? Well, we've just given you back 20 minutes. Wow. Use them well, and we'll see you uh, soon. Hopefully on June eighth. Thank Take you care, all. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. Bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>